Can you guys hear me okay? Yes. All right. Well, um, thank you so much. Uh, what an exciting event. I'm very excited to be here at the City of the Future. I want to thank all of our friends at Z Prime and CPS Energy for holding this, the City of San Antonio. It's events like these where we get together and I learn so much about what everybody else is working on. And uh, thank you for providing me the opportunity to talk to you a little bit about what we've been doing at Build San Antonio Green. Um, I have a question. How many people here uh, are have, like born and raised in San Antonio? Right, me too. And I love this city, and it's and I think that it really um, has driven uh, the work that we do at Build San Antonio Green. And uh, so, with that, I'll kind of start the video. I'm going to tell you a little story. I'm sorry, guys, just one second. Can you pause it? Because it's not playing right here. Sorry about that, guys. We're going to have to start it over. I'm sorry? Oh, okay, great. Thank you. All right, I'll stand over here. All right, so we're Build San Antonio Green, and we are um, excited to be here. We are an official partnership, and we're founded by CPS Energy, the City of San Antonio, and Bear County. Um, we were founded to reduce emissions, and that has really driven all of our work um, for the past 16 years. Um, and today our mission is to protect and enhance the quality of life of the people of San Antonio through community engagement, solar for everyone, an affordable green building. Thanks guys, it's here now. So we do single family retrofits, um, single family new construction, multi-family um, mixed use, and we're very excited that we rolled out our commercial program, and we're excited to be certifying the CPS Energy new headquarters, and we're about to roll out our retrofit program for commercial buildings as well. But I'm here to talk to you a little bit about green building. We have a um, above code voluntary platform really that we designed to um, really help builders and um, developers to build a green home, right? That can be measured, a performance-based home. We deal in um, percentages better than code in energy and in water, site, materials, the indoor air quality of the home, uh, just, just to kind of name some of the basic areas. One of the important things is that we work with builders to make it easy, right? We have a partnership with them. We review their plans, we look at um, their full spec, and we can help them uh, achieve our certification. We have unbiased technical expertise to help you go solar on your home or business. We have EV charging also on, uh, included. And we work with builders all throughout San Antonio at every different, uh, all kinds of price points, affordable housing, uh, production builders, um, all of it. And we specialize in rebates for builders and energy savings for customers. I think we've moved close to about 17 million in the past, you know, 16 years or so. So we've been at this at a while, but I think the green building program really started to hit a good pace about 2009. And when that happened, um, you know, today we've grown to have certified over 9,000 projects here in San Antonio, which is over 21 million square feet, 15 megawatts of peak demand reduction, and a savings of 253 million pounds of CO2, and almost 200,000 pounds of NOx. This equates to taking about 21,000 cars off the road of San Antonio every year. But that's what we've been doing. And I want to talk to you about the future and our vision for where we want to go. So, green building, right? This is where everything began with us. Um, but when the meter started getting, uh, smart meters started rolling out and, you know, our grid began to transform from a pipeline of the past to a two-way communications platform, we saw what would eventually happen. We believe that, you know, rolling out of the smart grid, this water grid one day, we believe will do the same. Transportation grid is kind of somewhat naturally occurring through autonomous vehicles and, you know, trans guide. 
Now we have also the internet of things and a lot of disruptive technology. I mean, my watch, you know, for example. So when we start bundling these things together, smart electric, smart water, smart transportation grid, and the internet of things, we believe that we can get to smart city by 2030. I think it's a logical inevitability. That's why back in 2009 or so, we, we wrote a program called Smart Green. And that is the automated green building that plugs into our smart city. Today, we've been working with Meritage Homes. We have about a thousand of those certifications. But a lot of it is driven by consumer demand. It's a green home with a lot of um, technology that people want. That's what the customer wants. And so all of these things are gonna continue to change and continue to evolve. The next stage will be the fully automated green building where we kind of go beyond just monitoring and we really go into like demand response solar or grid tied EV storage, right? We could have demand response irrigation one day because a smart green home can be predictive and reactive. And so that is, I think where that's gonna end up, where that we're gonna end up with a smart green. But we also have another factor, which is our climate plan, SA Climate Ready. Uh, I was very honored to serve uh, our community in this plan and working to both create mitigation and adaptation. Our goal is to achieve net zero carbon by 2050. I know CPS Energy knows that, right? You've heard it. But the way I think about it, I think about it in the wet, it really in terms of the weather. Like what's really gonna happen, right? Well, we know all the things, it's gonna keep getting hotter. It's gonna, we're gonna have longer periods of drought. We're gonna have more extreme weather events in general. So I started thinking, well, the way that we think about buildings also needs to change in the same way that our thoughts have changed uh, about technology or the way that we live. When we started rolling out that meter, we think the next move is we're gonna start rolling out sensors, sensors on everything. And when we do that, we are gonna have more data. I think CPS told me they had more data in three months than they did in the entire history of the country, of the company. So the question we all wanna know is what are we gonna do with it? Well, I think the step one is just the collection of it, right? Step two, we're kind of moving into and that's managing it somewhat. But I think where that's going is that we're gonna optimize and utilize it. And that is where all of our opportunity comes in. So back to the weather here in San Antonio. When we start thinking about, you know, how do we get climate ready? Well, how are we gonna transition our building stock to be able to, to operate in a better environment and use predictive analytics over time with real-time data to basically start managing the city in, in a, um, as it relates to emergency management and response to improve all of those times. And it also, you know, there's so much, there's just so much opportunity out here. I think it's a very exciting time and I think smart city technology is gonna take us towards resource and climate resiliency. I think that that's the tool. Now I'll talk to you a little bit about social equity. I think, I know that means a lot to, a lot of things to a lot of people, but I wanna to talk to you specifically about data as a tool for social equity. Now, I've enjoyed seeing this happen, actually, with CPS Energy and the evolution of solar is, I think, a really good example. You know, in the beginning, right, uh, step program, when we started rolling out um, solar rebates and so on, this is where the solar really was, right? It was in a little higher income areas, and CPS Energy, had a great strategy because they realized so they started diversifying into building out all the solar farms right but growing up here in san antonio i think to, think to myself there's a man here that coined this term how are we going to fill the solar desert right that's the south side the east side the west side they don't have any solar the the response was simply solar from cps energy that's how they rolled out the solar host sa um, the roofless community solar Today we have Big Sun, what a, a very, another innovative program unique in the whole nation. So that diversica diversifi diversification of solar is how we got here, right? And that's how we can bring solar to everyone. I asked myself a question, I think it's a good example because what do you think the EV map looks like, right? The distribution of EVs. So I think that this is a really, really good primer for how we can move forward with EV also. And again, I think that the technology, the applications are almost limitless. 
You know, I'm a really big proponent of using data as a social equity uh, tool because it brings a layer of transparency that is, it's just all right there. And that's, I think a lot of it comes down to infrastructure, you know, again, data. But when we start with people and we understand how we're going to live, I think it really all begins with that. So seeing that smart city evolution, seeing the internet of things continue to radically um, change, this is why we, the next leg that we're going, in terms of Build San Antonio Green, we're evolving from a green building, right? Then we went to a smart green. I think the future of homes and buildings here in San Antonio is a climate ready home. Right? Because again, because of the weather, we're going to have to change the way that we think about buildings. So we've written this certification program as well. A climate ready home for us is still a green home. It can still have smart technology, but it has different uh, uh, additional criteria like heat, heat resistant materials. Right? We have to get very practical about what happens in an extreme weather event. Well, we don't want our roofs and our you know, sides of our house melting off. We need backup power. We need to have uh, you know, flood resilience. We need to bury our communications line deeper so that we don't lose communications. We need, you know, so what we did is we looked around the entire country at every climate zone that we're going to turn into, right, to those building codes, and then we started integrating them into our voluntary criteria. So we're really excited about it, and again, I think that this is, this is where we're going to end up. So we want to roll out to the people of San Antonio like a preparedness plan specific to your neighborhood and give them all of that information so that they can become climate ready. I think, I think uh, again, the future, it's limitless. Um, we're very excited about it. We're honored to serve the people of San Antonio. And I think that it really, all of this is enabled by partnership. We have all of the... You know, we have great thought leaders, we have all the tools, we, you know, we have all of those things, the technology. The question is, do we have the will? Do we have the will to all work together towards one goal? And, and, and that's the spirit of San Antonio. That's one of the things that we're really good at. And I know and I believe that we're going to capture that power, that the spirit of San Antonio, and we're going to all work towards this uh, wonderful goal for our community. So um, with that, I would just say, you know, the future, it's right now. And I think when you start with people and you think about their quality of life, that will help lead us in the right direction. And uh, I thank you very much for, um, for your time. Thank you.